we have a secret, you know, because oh. you know this colors with uh, uh, like with, uh, with electricity. Yeah. So every time, just before, I just have to uh, hit the button and Push then the it's done and go. <laughs> <laughs> Poštovani gledoci, danas imamo nevjerovatne goste. Oni su pobednici Glasa naroda 2019. Grupa Keino. Hello guys, how are you? Hello, Hello. we are good. How are you? I am also fine waiting for Eurovision season and everything else that's going on. Okay, uh, I have one question for you. Does anything um, like a number of 221 points sound familiar to you maybe from anywhere? <laughs> yeah, but uh, wasn't it like 291? <laughs> <laughs> it was 291. It was 291. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, familiar. <laughs> well, uh, that 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 was really uh, almost a record. So uh, you didn't win a uh, whole Eurovision, but you definitely won popular vote last year. So can you tell us something more about how it was? Uh, did you expect such uh, such a result no i think we were quite surprised as you can see in the broadcasting that we were crying and <laughs> screaming and everything but uh it was so fun to like see that people out there voted for us and that they liked our song and our performance that that was really great but now it's new year you have new song you also have new haircuts Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, can you tell us something more? <laughs> <laughs> well, something stays always the same. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell us something more about Monument? Well, I think that a Monument is the song that we all wanted to make quite a quite a while. It's really Kano, uh, comp a compressed version of Kano, whatever what we are and. It was inspired by uh, Fred uh, philosophically asking what's left when we're gone, what, what's left of us and or what's le left of humanity. And then like this big philosophical questions then started out, okay, let's write a song about that and write a song about the people in our lives and people around that actually make a difference because it is people that make the, those moments that you'll remember and those Uh, relationships that are very important so yeah we wanted to honor them and also honor the people that has been before us making sure that we can live in this world as we are now. Uh, I definitely agree that heritage is a very important thing uh, for all of the people I mean we are all from we are all made from somebody yeah and even like they live lived I don't know five or six uh, thousand years ago, we don't know them, but we have uh, genetics. Uh, but uh, uh, the one thing that is uh, really good uh, about uh, all this idea is that um, you really stay close to Eurovision fans. You know, um, there are some artists that come to Eurovision and then just go separate ways. But uh, you manage to stay right here next to Eurovision for almost uh, for almost full two years and you're back now. So uh, what do you think, uh, Is it uh, was it your idea originally or you uh, just felt that energy from fans that uh, was quite positive, especially after Eurovision? I mean, we love everything about Eurovision and that people from all around the world kind of unites through uh, a TV show. Like, it's amazing. And we kind of decided right after we went off stage that we wanted to come back because we were just like, we were... The Spirit in the Sky was our first song together and we knew that we are already so good friends and when we start making music together anything that we can do m might be like bigger or like where does it go from here so mm. um, yeah and I really also think that the the whole the Eurovision community is is so cool because you can yeah. be uh, you can be different you can be who you are and you can you can unite from so many p places around the world and also so many backgrounds like and us yeah we're yeah. three uh from three decades from three different places <laughs> in norway and uh also come from musical places and so but i think it wasn't before we were in tel aviv that i really felt that or saw how how much it actually is quite like 
pe- like uh, people that are soccer fans or football fans that also unite uh, yeah. uh, like via, beyond borders and it's really really cool uh, but that is really really great because uh, you managed to do something um, you know Eurovision is like you said uh, about people from different places and different backgrounds but uh, you managed to present Norway in quite complete way that was uh, the the song that you made i have read a lot of comments that was pure norway i mean definition of that country and that <laughs> <laughs> maybe and, it is <laughs> yeah. well i think it is yeah you have the sami heritage you have uh, the nordic melodies mm-hmm. so I'll, uh, we also s- said that uh or I, what it, one thing good about Eurovision is like it's like a musical tapas table. You all bring the best you have to show from your country, mm-hmm. and uh, so that was important to show our culture in uh, in the song. And if you go this year on Eurovision, it will be slightly different because there will probably be no audience. So how do you feel about that? This is quite strange situation and such. So uh, do you have any thoughts about that? Uh, what is going to be and such? You know, we just have to imagine all the people. If you're lucky enough to go to Eurovision, we just have to imagine all the people that are looking at Eurovision that night and just feel their love through the lens. Well, and of course, it's of... something that we miss. I mean, just yeah. now yeah. hearing everyone in the arena screaming and cheering and singing. But it's like it's so silent when we're finished. <laughs> uh, but the only good thing, though, actually, at Melody Grand Prix, they're cheating because they put uh, like audience. They have recorded uh, audience yeah, from right. all around <laughs> in Norway. They have actually uploaded uh, their applause. So when we finish, we hear some applause. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they will figure out something uh, like that for Eurovision. But uh, but we will see. Uh, this year, Melody Grand Prix is quite. Uh, quite uh, strong there is quite strong competition in such uh, uh, what do you think about the other songs do you have maybe some favorites if you listened it there are so there are really strong songs and strong artists as well uh, i don't think there's been a year that has be, had like uh, bigger named artists in quite a while now so and now we know and still there are few there are quite a lot of artists to go so yeah, it's gonna. It's a very tough competition. So um, yeah, exciting. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't they just like be a bit worse? worse? <laughs> <laughs> you you really picked the hard year to compete. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tom and Alexandra, you two competed uh, in 2018 as well. Um, uh, did you come to idea of collaborating uh, back then, or that happened later? Uh, well, I ha- I actually I had the idea, or I, when I when I noticed I noticed how extremely uh, professional Alexandra was, I had that in my back of my mind. Like, okay, if I remember, maybe I, I'll try to work with Alexandra uh, at one time in the future. But she didn't know, of course. No, he called me later that year. And the, I said yes. And the rest is history. Yeah. Um, I have a question for Fred. Uh, can you tell us something more about Yoik and the tradition of uh, Sami people? Uh, it is really interesting for all of the fans and you uh, basically spread uh, the, that tradition all around the world uh, with uh, that 2019 act. Yeah, for me it was a big honor to do that. Um, Yoik, you know, that's a, it's a traditional way of singing. The Samis have been using Yoik for over a thousand years. And uh, a yoik can describe you as a person, and a yoik can, uh, I can yoik an animal, and I can yoik, uh, you know, places. And uh, the Sami culture is about that everything has a soul. A tree has a soul, animals have souls. And, uh, you know, the Sami culture is also very big. You, we have a lot of tradition and cultures in Sami. We have the South Samis, and we have the North Samis, we have, have the Skolt Samis. But the, culture where I'm from we are we have been doing working with reindeers for over 2000 years uh, I have found out that uh, every uh, member of family has a significant yoik and I, I saw like songs with title I don't know mother's yoik father's yoik uh, yes. grandfather's yoik and such and that that's really uh, I, I didn't find uh, something uh, similar in the history of uh, all of the places. I mean, uh, especially here in Serbia, we have something, uh, well, if you have yoik, we would call it oik. Uh, 
uh, like oikacha and such, but it's like a, a group uh, of people singing and it's quite loud and aggressive. But uh, this uh, this sounds so um, intimate and uh, uh, personal, especially in monument, the part uh, before second um, before second the chorus so when you have like a part can you tell us what does it mean uh the rap part is uh our paths are still visible even though we have lost our legacy uh and uh, Cyprus. yeah and uh i can't remember that in english <laughs> so uh-huh. you'll, you'll kneel down by the abandoned fireplace yes and it, i say something before that <laughs> with a little empty river yeah. yeah yeah when the rivers have gone dry i will be uh, kneeling, kneeling by, by the ab- <laughs> abandoned fireplace <laughs> it's pretty well, cool <laughs> yeah. yeah it's really great when you actually know what what it means so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just uh when i uh, you know mix between norwegian english and sami i got you know <laughs> yeah. we didn't know this like extremely poetic lines before yeah. it was just like in the bridge yeah. yeah it was just a few weeks before uh, before <laughs> releasing like fred by the way what are you singing or what are you, or what are you rapping about because he was always like yeah yeah now i'm gonna rap it my part and then we <laughs> also do see the sami words and like okay that doesn't mean a lot for me it sounds good and then suddenly when it's translated like Wow, Whoa, that's really deep. Yeah. We didn't know. We had it in it. <laughs> so people didn't know that um, uh, Fred is actually a poetic soul. Uh, everybody knew poetic. him like a uh, epic UX guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> poetic UX. Uh, poetic UX. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully some kind of new vi- video will become viral on yeah. that topic. <laughs> uh, okay, I have a question please. for Alexandra. Hi. How did you pull out that note in Monument, <laughs> Thunder and Gloria? Well, you know, when we wrote the song, we always want to push each other to the limit because that's actually where we sound the best. But uh, there has been a lot of practice. When I started rehearsing in uh, October, I think, I couldn't reach it and I kind of panicked and I was like, ah. But then I started rehearsing every day just to like make it, yeah. Like make the monument, the song, my home. <laughs> but okay, we, we we can tell the the like we have a secret, you know, because oh. you know these colors with uh, like with uh, with electricity. Yeah. So every time just before, I just have to uh, hit the button and Push then the, the thunder goes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all of the singers should should use that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so guys, uh, you got together uh, almost two years ago. But the question is, do you plan to stay together? You really uh, have masses behind you right now. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is our uh, this is our life now. Being together, having concerts, writing songs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, which is like a monument is just the first song of many this year, mm-hmm. and uh, that will eventually end up in an album. Uh, so yeah, if, if it's so fun to be able to <laughs> to write uh, music with these guys, and hopefully, crossing fingers that we'll be able to perform uh, on bigger venues soon. So that's uh, yeah. yeah, we have uh, still a lot to go. I just wanted to ask you uh, about uh, how did you handle with these cancellations and such. It's quite a tough time for artists. Uh, ma- many people don't even recognize it, but it's uh, it's uh, a bit uh, complicated when you don't uh, don't have to uh, the, an opportunity to perform. I mean, you earn money from it and such. It's a bit uh, tricky now. Yes, of course it's. Uh I think live uh, the concerts that's where uh, most of our income come from and then of course when when everything is delayed or or moved uh, we um, yeah you notice that how however we're very lucky that we live in Norway and there are different uh, or there's like relief funds for artists and uh, you can apply <laughs> for grants so it's not as bad as many of our, uh, of our colleagues in other countries that have. I know people that have had to sell their instruments because there are no jobs. So we're just 
really, really mm -hmm. grateful and lucky that we are in Norway. And that's why it's very important for us also to to remember that we are very lucky and that we have to continue working and continue spreading music and, and hopefully, um, yeah, to do do some extra work because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You like, probably had plenty of time to write new songs. Probably M Monument uh, is written during this uh, period. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Without the pandemic, no monument. Mm. So, <laughs> so thanks to pandemic, <laughs> there is monument. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you you uh, have also songs um, that were like uh, between uh, Eurovisions, your Eurovision campaigns, and um, I will just uh, list some of them that I personally really like: uh, "Praying," uh, "Winter Night," and "Winter Night," and "Dancing in the Smoke." They are great, but I really feel cold when I listen to it. Everything is about winter and transarctic <laughs> lover <laughs> and such. <laughs> That's actually, yeah, well, we are from the north and Fred is really from the uh, very north. Northern north. North, yeah. <laughs> north is north. <laughs> so I guess I guess we need to spend a bit more time in uh, in southern parts of Europe and then suddenly it's going to be oh, more summer of us, vibes. Summer vibes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no Latino from you then. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of snow in our song. It has been uh, yeah. in our, up until now. But yeah. you never know. The winter is here. Maybe uh, there will be a spring sometime and hopefully <laughs> less winter in our songs. <laughs> how do you handle with, um, especially on North, uh, how do you handle with uh, that um, polar nights? We have very warm ho houses and a lot of ah. trees that we can burn. <laughs> 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 uh, okay guys thanks a lot for this wonderful opportunity uh, you are the great ambassadors of Norway really and I hope that you will uh, be able to perform it uh, on stage on real Rotterdam stage and not from <laughs> like some <laughs> studio and such I'm a subscriber, I'm a like, what is the duty? What is the fact that yes, it's a part of the game. What the couple of the gas emissions is.